All praises, all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel, those out there practicing the law of liberty. I uh, hope you're having a good day today. Uh, we're going to continue with our lost book series. And we're going to continue today in a book called The Shepherd of Hermes. The Shepherd of Hermes. Okay, let's, let's, let's get into a little bit about this. Now, The Shepherd of Hermes was a religious literary work of the 2nd or 3rd century. It was considered a valuable book by many early Christians. Uh, the Shepherd of Hermes was even considered canonical, um, a canonical scripture. It was considered by the early church uh, to be canonized and put into the Bible, what we call the 66 books or, you know, the uh, 80, 80 books because, you know, the 14 books was taken out the Apocrypha. But back then they were 80 books, but they took the Apocrypha out, I think, in the 1400s. But the Shepherd of Hermes was considered, uh, you know, scripture, really, back in the day. But for some reason, it, it, you know, it didn't make it in there. But I think it's still a valuable piece of uh, liter literature that, you know, that I'm going to read. Uh, but a little bit about this, uh, this book. Uh, the story involves Hermes, who became a slave to a woman named Rhoda. Rhoda. Later, after she had given Hermes his freedom, their paths crossed again. Hermes had a vision in which Rhoda appears asking for his forgiveness regarding her believing he had certain impures, impure thoughts. It is in this vision that an old woman helps him by telling him to do penance as well as make right the sins of his people. In another vision, Hermes is visited by an angel of repentance who emerges as a shepherd and delivers certain laws and mandates that become instrumental in the, in the establishment of the early Christian church's ethics. These mandates also appear in visions as the angel-like shepherd gives his instruction. So that's a little bit, a bit of background on the shepherd of Hermes. So let's get into it. Let's get into the, uh, the reading of it. Uh, we're going to start right here in chapter 1. Uh, they call them visions. You know, vision one, but we, we you know, we just say chapter one. <clears throat> he who had bred me up sold a certain young maid at Rome, whom when I saw many years after, I remembered her and began to love her as a sister. It happened some time afterwards that I saw her washing in the river Tiber, and I reached out my hand unto her and brought her out of the river. And when I saw her, I thought with myself, saying, How happy should I be if I had such a wife, both for beauty and manners? This I thought with myself, nor did I think any more. But not long after, as I was walking and musing on these thoughts, I began to honor this creature of God, thinking with myself, How noble and beautiful she was. And when I had walked a little, I fell asleep, and the Spirit caught me away and carried me through a certain place towards the right hand through which no man could pass. It was a place among rocks, very steep and unpassable by water. When I was past this place, I came into a plain, and there falling down upon my knees, I began to pray unto the Lord and to confess my sins. And as I was praying, the heavens was open. And I saw the woman, which I had coveted, and saluted me from heaven, and saying, Hermes, hail. And I looked upon her, answered, Lady, what dost thou do here? She answered me, I am taken up hither to accuse thee of sin before the Lord. The lady said, I wilt thou convince me. No, said she, but hear the words which I am about to speak unto thee. God who dwelt in heaven and hath made all things out of nothing and hath multiplied them for his holy church sake is angry with thee because thou hast sinned against me. And I answered, said unto the lady, if I have sinned against thee, tell me where and where or in what place or when did I even speak an unseemly or dishonest word unto thee. Have I not always esteemed thee as a lady? 
Have I not always reverenced thee as a sister? Why then thou why then thou dost imagine these wicked things against me? Then she, smiling upon me, said, The desire of naughtiness has risen up in thy heart. Does it not seem to thee to be an ill thing for a righteous man to have an evil desire rise up in his heart? It is indeed a sin, and that a very great one, to such a one for a righteous man thinketh that which is righteous. And whilst he does so, and walketh uprightly, he shall have the Lord in heaven favorable unto him in all his business. But as for those who think wickedly in their heart, they take to themselves death and captivity, and especially those who love this present world and glory in their riches and regard not the good things that are to come. Their souls wander up and down and know not where to fix. Now this is the case of such as are double-minded who trust not in the Lord and displease and neglect their own life. But do thy prayer unto the Lord, and he will heal thy sins and the sins of the whole world and of all his saints. As soon as she had spoken these words, the heavens were shut, and I remained utterly swaddled up with sadness and fear, and said within myself, If this be laid against me for sin, how can I be saved? Or how should I ever be able to entreat the Lord for my many and great sins? With what? words shall I beseech him to be merciful unto me. And as I was thinking over these things and meditating in myself upon them, behold, a chair was set over against me of the wildest wood and bright as snow. And there came an old woman in a bright garment, having a book in her hand and sat alone and saluted me saying, Hermes, hail, I have been full of sorrow and weeping answered. Hail, lady. And she said unto me, Why art thou sad, Hermes? Who would want to be patient and modest and always cheerful? I answered and said to her, Lady, I reproach has been laid a reproach has been laid to me to my charge by an excellent woman who tells me that I have sinned against her. She replied, Far be any such thing from the servant of God, but it may be the desire of her has risen up in thy heart. For indeed, such a thought maketh thy servant of God guilty of sin. Nor ought such a detestable thought to be in the servant of God. Nor should he who is approved by the Spirit desires that which is evil. But especially Hermes, who contains himself from all wicked lusts, and is full of all simplicity, and of great innocence. Nevertheless, the Lord is not so much angry with thee for thy own sake, as upon the account of thy house, which has committed wickedness against the Lord and against their parents. And for that, and for that, out of thy fondness towards thy sons, thou hast not admonished thy house, but hast permitted them to live wickedly. For this cause the Lord is angry with thee, but he will heal all the evils that are done in thy house. For through their sins and iniquities thou art wholly consumed in secular affairs. But now the mercy of God has taken compassion upon thee and upon thy house and hath greatly comforted thee. Only as for thee, do not wander, but be of an evil mind, an even mind and comfort thy house. As the workman bringeth forth his works, offer it to whomsoever he pleaseth. So should thou be teaching every day what is just cut off a great sin. Thou should be teaching every day is just and cut off a great sin. Wherefore, cease not to admonish thy sons, for the Lord knows that they will repent with all their heart, and they shall be written in the book of life. And when she had said this, she added unto me, Wilt thou hear me? Read. I answer her, Lady, I will. Hear, the, hear then, she said, and open the book. She read gloriously and greatly and wonderfully such things as I could not keep in my memory, for they were terrible words, such as no man could, could bear. Howbeit I committed her last words to my remembrance, for they were but few and of great use to me. Behold, the mighty Lord, who by his invisible power and with his excellent wisdom made the world, 
and by his glorious counsel beautified his creatures, and with the word of his strength fixed the heaven, and founded the earth upon the waters, and by this powerful virtue established his holy church, which he has blessed. Behold, he will remove the heavens in the mountains, in the hills, in the seas, and all things should be made plain for his elect, that he may render unto them the promise which he had promised, with much honor and joy. And if so be that, they shall keep the commandments of God, which they have received with great faith. And when she had made an end of reading, she rose up out the chair, and behold, four young men came and carried the chair to the east. And she called me, and she called me upon her, and touched my breast, and said unto me, Did my reading please thee? I answered, Lady, these last things please me. But what won't before was severe, was, severe, was severe and hard. She said unto me, These last things are for the righteous, but the foregoing are for the revolters and the heathen. And as she was walk, as she was talking with me, two men appeared and took her upon their shoulders and went to the east where the chair was. And she was cheerf and she went cheerfully away. And as she was going, said unto me, Hermes, be of a good cheer. All praises, all praises to Yahweh. So I'm gonna end it right there. I don't wanna make these too long, you know. I'm just gonna break them up. So I hope you guys can meditate on this. And may the, and may the Lord bless.